the loop and defying the crowd. Left, all right, all the king, those magnificent men in their flying machines. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So, Aeronautica Imperialis. The moment I saw this announced, I knew I was going to get it, so I have. I fully intend to get a copy of everything Imperial, because I like the Imperial Navy stuff, um, and I'm going to paint them in a variety of colours. So um, this is a bit of a different project for me, as I will be primarily switching from acrylics um, to Tamiya acrylics, because they go in very well through the airbrush. Um, which is what I'm mostly going to be using for to do these um, uh, models. Now, in retrospect, I don't think it's much of a time saver, but I do think you can get better lines with ma with masking, um, especially with some of the more um, the more precise lines that you need. Anyway, um, so that's primarily the reason for doing this, just to try and make sure that um, my paintwork is a bit more precise. Also, at the very least, achieve a precision like that I can't normally achieve with um, uh, regular acrylics or an airbrush. Anyway, um, more on to the on the model itself. So I have to say, they definitely go together very well, um, and the way they've actually crammed a lot into a single sprue is quite remarkable, I reckon. Um, one thing that is very different, of, well, comparing these to regular scale models, is that they fit together in such a way where there are no actual seam lines to worry about or at very least they're obscured by other detail and the like so you don't have to do any putty work or anything like that to um just put them um the, some assembly finishing touches on these um kits they go together in a way which um pr precludes i think that's the word the need for that so yeah you can just see me going through and doing my usual assembly process there it's pretty easy just you know liberate the bits from the sprue then clean them up as usual with my array of sanding sticks and scalpels and other bits and pieces you've seen me do this a lot it's nothing particularly remarkable One problem I did have with this kit was that some of the bits are extremely fiddly to get installed, so there's a very good chance of overdoing it with your glue, at least I did a couple of times, and I also lost a couple of bits when I tried to pick them up and um, place them more precisely with a pair of tweezers. They just slipped right out and um, they're now somewhere on the floor of my apartment and I cannot find them. So I've got a couple of, well at least one Thunderbolt which is not going to get assembled for this reason. Um, so yeah, just take your time, be careful, usual stuff. Um, and yeah, um, you can also very easily accidentally sand away too much detail with these things, so that's um, why I'm using my hobby knife a lot of the time rather than the sanding stick, um, simply because um, it's much easier to avoid like removing actual detail that you want. The one thing I have found is that um, it's a Tamiya um, plastic file, which is a very, very fine metal file. It tends to work very well in these situations, and I intend to use it more often for these sorts of projects. Anyway, um, yeah, moving right along. So the nose is one of the points where you can um, switch between the variants of the Thunderbolt that you want to assemble. Um, it comes with options for the regular variant, which is four auto cannons and two um, forward mounted laser cannons, or forward mounted I should say, and the Fury variant, which has two um, bolt chain guns basically, uh, that's a very 40k thing to say, and um, two, two forward firing laser cannons, so yeah. Now the primary difference is um, in which nose package you choose to assemble. And once you've got that done, that's pretty much the only real variation between the two, which is pretty good. It's a, a neat way of doing uh, multiple variants for these sorts of multi-part kits. Anyway, um, so that's just me now that I've assembled the upper and lower hull together and mated them. Just going to make sure they're firmly fitting, then I'll leave it to dry for some time. 
Uh, during this video, I assembled two vehicle, um, not vehicles, thunderbolts at the same time, a fury and a regular variant. So you might see me interchangeably switch between them during this video. Oh, and a bit of a heads up, I did lose some footage, especially of the airbrush work, which I'm very sorry about, because it's not something I usually um, capture due to the um, aggravation of getting the airbrush outside and set up. Anyway. Again, still experimenting with camera angles after all these years of doing this because I'm a sucker for punishment and I haven't found one which quite works for me. Though lately the um, in my lap arrangement seems to be working the best, especially for uh, minimizing these weird camera angles and um, you know being able to actually see what I'm doing a lot of the time and also at the same time see what the camera is seeing. Anyway, I've also gone back to using my standalone camcorder rather than the webcam. It actually makes things, weirdly enough, a lot easier. Especially with like the little side mounted doohickey to actually, um, the viewport to actually see what I'm shooting fairly readily. Anyway, that's, um, yeah, not really relevant though, so moving on. Uh, now, I had trouble, um, figuring out how to mate the, um, the engine intakes to the actual, um, model. Um, that's fine though, because basically one of them works for one side and one of them works for the other side. I accidentally snipped out two for the same side and was trying to fit them, so. That's why I was having some initial aggravation. This is why you always dry fit your parts first to figure out exactly the the eccentricities of the kit. So you can see there, there's me putting the um, the bit I didn't need away. Um, and yeah. So that is just about done for this model, I think. I'm just trying to see what I'm doing. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, just the rocket booster to go. Um, in the lore, these things are capable of both, of both atmospheric and orbital flight. Um, specifically to, you know, generally drop down from carrier ships to perform missions in atmosphere. That's why it comes with um, two high-powered turbofans and, of course, a rocket booster. So, and presumably it's also got reaction control systems, which may or may not be sculpted in um, all over the aircraft to maneuver in vacuum. Um, so, yeah, but it's not the primary starfighter of the Imperial Navy. That, I don't remember it. I think it's the Fury? But, yeah, it, it, this the uh, Thunderbolt, though, is the primary... The, not the primary, the mainstay, the better word, st um, at, in Atmo Fighter for the Imperial Navy. And as for underwing pylons, I didn't really know what I wanted to go with, so I went with a fairly um, centrist option, I suppose. Um, not knowing as to whether I would deploy it with either air, all air-to-air -air or a um, mixture of ground attack, I opted for a pair of, I forget the name of them, the air-to-air -air missile equivalents and some uh, air-to-ground missile equ equivalents. So this, uh, these two aircraft will be kitted out for all missions in terms of the ordnance department. And that's pretty much it. We This is the model assembled. Again, as I said earlier, it was a very, very easy to easy build. Um, just some minor eccentricities with learning the kit um, that needed to be sorted out. So yeah, always read your instructions, folks. Anyway, the way I mounted these, sorry, um, to my um, stand is via a... Um, basically a toothpick but and I drilled a little hole in the ball socket joint um so a bit of toothpick would catch there and with a bit of blue tack added in as well um yeah that held it quite nicely okay and as I mentioned previously I messed up recording a lot of the airbrush videos so this is after the first um and second coats of getting a two-tone camouflage going um so I've already applied the brown initially put on some masking putty, then sprayed on the green. And now I just, just you saw me apply some dry brushing there just to try and catch some highlights. And now we're removing the putty. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And gotta say, it works, it's fairly nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. The problem is airbrush work is always time consuming. You have to drag it out, get it set up, deal with it. Yeah, 
anyway, um, so this is a bit more of a substantive clip of um, airbrushing that I came up with. Um, this is doing the um, belly color. So I'm, I'm sort of got my inspiration from a, a World War II British color schemes in general, which generally had a two tone up top and a sky blue color on the bottom. So what I've done here is I've masked off the top and now um, for the bits which are a bit more difficult I'm applying masking uh, putty uh, to the um, areas on the upper hull which I want to protect. Uh, well, And uh, as you can see I'm leaving the lower hull and specifically the areas I want to be covered with my um, sky blue colour um, unmasked. Okay so now we've fully masked up our aircraft. They are ready for the airbrush. So yep, that's me just testing it out and then applying it. So it's fairly simple. Two thin coats will, uh, is easy and I'm using these Tamiya pots pretty much neat um, straight from the pot. Um, one thing I'm consistently impressed with about Tamiya paints is well, they don't smell good. They're probably at least somewhat toxic. So always wear a respirator when doing this through the airbrush. They always, always shoot well through the airbrush. So I will be using them a lot more for these sorts of projects. Anyway, so after the fact, we remove the masking and here we go. I gotta say it's um, pretty good. Now the ma the masking pattern is deliberately a bit wonky, which is fine. It was meant to be a bit wavy, sort of um, taking my cues a bit from how the Soviets do it, as they don't necessarily keep it neat. They sort of blend it onto the um, upper hull as well. Anyway, so that's it. Um, that's pretty much all the airbrush work done. So as usual, um, the masking didn't quite work in a lot of places, so I'm just going back and doing some minor brush work to um, uh, just fix up the li the lining, especially where the um, the camo pattern meets the um, under the lower hull pattern. Um, yeah, so just you know reinforcing the color where it needs it and so forth. Alright, and with the masking on the, well, sorry, the colour on the lower hull applied, I'm also going to dry brush it a little bit just to catch some of those details, and the colour I'm using is just a Vallejo model colour off-white. So the difference here is I dry brushed um, with uh, for the upper hull with the actual Tamiya paints, I'm not sure if they necessarily work with it. So for future projects, I think I'll try and find a better, like, regular acrylic dry brush color. Anyway, now onto the detail work. So for it to start with, um, I think this is black, which I'm painting on all of the windows, or the canopy to be use the exact term. Um, so it's a fairly simple approach since painting canopies is really not my strong point. I'm just gonna basically uh, fill in the, blank, the, the blanks and um, just leave it at that. I at some point when during the highlight stage I'll also paint some a bit try and get some reflection effects going but it'll do for this model it's definitely not my favorite part of it and it's definitely the part I struggle with the most Now for all the sort of detail work, uh, you have to be particularly careful because if you mess up, uh, you have to go back and do your Tamiya paints again and that's not fun. So just be careful and if you do make mistakes, just leave them be, let them dry and then you can come back with the Tamiya paint, just fix them up. Especially, you'll see, you'll see this especially when it comes to the metallic stage of these models. So for the missiles, I just picked a generic sky grey just to differentiate them from the, um, the sky blue color on the um, underside of the hull. Um, so simple paint job, just two, two thin coats as Duncan says, and you're done. So I felt the need to introduce a bit of a splash of color into these models just to make them a bit more stand out a bit more in, in a few places. So I opted to paint the um, the spinners on the turbo fans and the nose cones of the missiles in um, Vallejo Game Color Gory Red, just to provide a bit more color to the model and make it um, stand out a bit more. 
And I'm I, I particularly like this effect. It's not realistic, but it looks stylistic and pretty cool for, you know, a futuristic, retro-futuristic space combat aircraft. And for a lot of the actual weaponry components, again, just to provide a bit uh, more of a dash of colour and variation into the model, I painted the um, the ammunition cases and the actual weapon barrels and fittings and furniture to them, just um, the Vallejo model colour black, a fairly um, drab colour, but I didn't want to get too crazy here. Okay, so also don't forget, you do need to highlight these things. Um, so for this, I just use black gray, I believe, or, or any lightish gray will do. And uh, finally, onto metallics. Now, the metallics I didn't put a lot of work into because I like my metallics somewhat muted. Um, but the color I used was Vallejo Model Air um, Gunmetal Gray, which is a really nice dark metal, which goes on really, really well in one or two coats and um, does a pretty adequate job of like doing um, industrial style metallics and like you know blue to non-shiny metal which is quite good for this sort of work. I uh, say so generally painted all of the metal components like the thrusters, the rocket engine and also what appear to be I'm assuming those little four divot things <clears throat> on the lower hull are um, basically VTOL thrusters so I painted them the same color as well and also painted parts of the gun barrels um, and the ammunition feed mechanisms in metallic metals as well. Um, of course, um, I also painted the turbofan blades, which means, um, being the numpty that I am, I got some on parts which I shouldn't have, so I went back with my red and tried to fix that up at various parts. See, this is very fiddly work and I made a lot of mistakes, but that's fine. It's easy enough to go back and um, fix them up for the most part. Um, just try and avoid messing up the dry brushed areas. That's harder to fix. And the final metallic, um, some of the ammo cans have exposed shells for, you know, stylistic reasons again. So I just painted those copper. Um, and due to the sheer insanely small size of it, I did make a mess and get a lot of it on the black of the ammo casing, but that's fine. It's easy enough to go back and correct once the um, color is in. And that's pretty much how the metallics on these were done. Uh, let's move on to... Um, well, I do believe the next stage is getting some um, shades going. Ah, I stand corrected. Some more um, just clean up work. Well, that's what all those Tamiya paints were there for. And also the um, like the inside of the turbo fan that's not the actual turbo fan blades itself. I painted that with a generic black gray and also painted the rim of the turbo fans again uh, just to give it put a little more color on the model and also while well, at the same time also fixing up um, mistakes that were made when painting the metallics in the first place. Uh, so um, a win-win. And of course, going back with the um, Tamiya colors and just neatening things up where they're where it's needed. Um, this is more of just a quick uh, final sanity check before um, we actually put a gloss on this. Um, well, I actually didn't, but I believe the next stage actually is the transfers work. Um, now I tried to do something a bit different and not gloss the model before um, doing the transfers work. Now. This sort of worked, but only because I did some final finishing touches which unified the surfaces of the transfer 
and the model itself. I'll explain more later on about how that works. But um, the normal procedure that people tend to do is they do a gloss because that's the best surface for transfers. It prevents silvering, which is air bubbles getting under the transfer. Um, and yeah, it just provides a better surface to adhere to. Whereas this time I didn't worry about the gloss, I simply just uh, applied the transfer to the um, to the matte painted surface. And of course I'm still fixing details here. Um, this will take just a minute. Uh, actually, you know what, let's skip, th skip through till the end. So, transfer work. Again, you've seen me do this a lot, it's pretty simple. Just slide uh, slide them on, uh, reposition with a brush or a toothpick, whichever works. Uh, the toothpick works when it's a transfer, it, just, it doesn't really respond to brush movement, but be careful doing it, you might damage the transfer. Um, so one thing I didn't do this time as well is I didn't use the micro set part of the micro set micro sole um, part, because I've been told that you don't really have to. Um, and I think that's mostly correct. Um, but yeah, you can see basically the process is get the transfer on the model, get it in its final position, and then give it a layer of micro sole to start melting that transfer into the model itself. Um, so yeah, I, I was a bit deliberately a bit sparse with the transfers just to not overwhelm the model. Um, I also couldn't find a lot in terms of um, like consistent Imperial Navy like insignia schema, so I just made it up. And since I was limited with the amount of transfers I had, I opted to... Um, one Imperial Navy symbol on the left wing of each side of the underside of the top side of the plane and the t I think it's the aircraft number on the tail. Um, so the idea was to just do something which looked visually interesting without overwhelming the model with transfers. So what I've done is I've given these guys a gloss coat once the transfers are fully dry, like a couple of days and multiple coats of microsole. And now I'm applying a wash. So I'm basically pin washing, but in the end I just decided to screw it and did it a lot more liberally, which is fine because I really want to be sure I want to hit all of the recessed detail and I can clean, well I will go back and clean a lot of the overspill up in the later stage, in the later stages once this um, enamel product is fully dry. So the product in question is Tamiya's panel liner product. I'm pretty happy with how it works, especially on aircraft. It really does make the panel lines on these sorts of things really pop, and it even works well on metallics as a more generic wash. So, yep, uh, definitely going to use this product a lot more in future. But realistically, though, I think it works just about as well as some of the MIG products, which and the MIG products also have the added advantages. They remain malleable after some time on the model, so you can more easily wipe it off without having to bust out the headache-inducing thinners. So, I don't know. Maybe I might just use the MIG stuff. It seems easier. Um, but either way, it both pr provide mostly the same effect, so I'm happy with both. So yeah, making, getting it, um, applying it more deep and more thorough in the areas which are in greater recess, basically. So, yeah. And I kept applying this until pretty much all of the recessed areas had a fairly decent coating of it. And all the details were, like, attacked. And, um, yeah, we'll move on to the final state. Well getting close to the final stage of removing it to even out the um, paint job and make it look like it's shading rather than just a mess. Okay, so I've already done some work on this guy and you can see what I'm doing here is I've got a cotton bud and I'm working in some, um, I believe that's Tamiya X20 enamel thinner over the model and just being careful not to overdo it um, because I do want to keep the de some of the details obviously in shade and every now and then when I have bits which are difficult to reach with the th with the cotton bud I use a paintbrush to go in and break up some of that um, um, enamel product and so yeah that's pretty much what it looks like with the th wash applied you can see the panel lines are really popping now and the transfers are none the worse for wear thanks to our gloss coat to protect them as well as a paint job for that matter so yeah this is basically the process for getting a wash like this done on both scale models and um these sorts of things which um 
yep, I have to say they definitely took to it quite well. So I will be using this for the rest of my um, Aeronautica Imperialis, like this exact method. But I don't necessarily think I'll be using the Tamiya product again. I just might end up using my MIG stuff because I can work with it a lot easier and it works a lot well with enamel thinners or for, with Odal, artists' odorless thinners and um, it can actually be rubbed off um, without, you know, too much in terms of product. Okay, and here we have the finished models. Now, I couldn't be bothered painting the bases for them. Um, and Okay, so what I, I have also done is um, I've applied two, th two thin coats of a, um, I believe it's a Mr. Hobby Super Flat Clear, just to kill the gloss on the, um, on the model. And so now it has a fairly decent matte surface all around, and the transfers are well and truly blended into the hull, to the, so they really do look painted on now. And yeah, um, the down one downside is it tends to dull the metal down a bit, which I don't mind a lot, especially for these sorts of things. And I also haven't painted up the bases and turn counters because I have to do a bit with masking for that, and I just can't be bothered at this stage, especially since I've got so much more to get through right now. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much what they look like. Um, I'm very happy with these results, especially these gaming pieces. Um, yeah. Definitely really chuffed to see that GW every now and then does these sorts of um, specialist games which I'm interested in. So here's holding out for Epic and a uh, future introduction of a guard army on this channel. As I said, I would never do another guard army, but at that scale, maybe I wouldn't mind so much. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. I have no idea what's coming down the pipe, so it'll be a surprise for me as well.